Good evening, councillors and officers and our viewers live streaming tonight's meeting. My name is Councillor Lena Messina. I'm the Mayor of Darabin City Council and the chairpersons of tonight's planning me meeting. It is my pleasure to welcome you all this evening. This meeting will be held virtually and will be closed to the public in the interest of health and safety of the public, councillors and staff. I declare this meeting open at 6.40 p.m. Officers, can you please admit the submitters for the evenings, this evening's meeting? Mayor Messina, that's everyone admitted to the meeting. Thank you. And that's five submitters tonight. Can I just confirm that they're all present? That's correct. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to our submitted this evening. As you have been advised, please keep your camera and microphone off. And when we get to the point of the meeting where you make your submissions, I'll invite you by name to turn your camera and audio on and address the planning committee meeting for three minutes. Thank you and welcome again. Um, item number one, welcome. Um, Darabin City Council acknowledges the Wandry Warang people as the traditional owners and custodians of the land and waters we now call Darabin and pays, out, pays respects to our oldest past, present and emerging. Council pays respect to all other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities in Darabin. Council recognise and pays tribute to the diverse culture, resilience and heritage of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. We acknowledge the leadership of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities and their right to self-determination in the spirit of mutual understanding and respect. The health and safety and wellbeing of the community has and will always be paramount consideration of the council. Council continues to be guided by the government directives and wants to be able to do the right thing for the health and our health of our community during the COVID-19 pandemic. This meeting is being held virtually. Should technical problems be encountered by council, the meeting may be adjourned until these are resolved with a maximum of 30 minutes. And if we cannot resolve the problem, we will reschedule the meeting. In such circumstances, an advice message will be shown on our screen. This meeting is being live streamed and via link on the council website, so the public will be able to view the proceedings of the meeting. The meeting is also being recorded and will be made available on the council website as soon as practical after the meeting. There are a few housekeeping matters and technical tips for councillors that I need to pass on. Please leave your video on and mute your sound unless you are asked to speak, unless you wish to speak, actually. If you wish to electronically raise, raise your hand, hover over the participants button in the main video window, and then press the small hand symbol in the right-hand corner. Please use this if you wish to ask a question or leave the meeting. Alternatively, um, can you please put your hand in front of you because sometimes you don't get to see that hovering of the raising of the hand and then I'll actually um, grab your attention by having that in the process. Note that there is no chat facility available during the meeting for councillors or general viewers. At Darabin, we pride ourselves on being a progressive and contemporary council in the interest of demonstrating leadership, I have high expectations that will be professional in our conduct throughout the evening and respectful in our debate. Chamber is both a workplace and a public space, and we have an obligation to ensure that the working environment and the public forums are safe for everyone, both emotionally and physically. Item number one, membership. Before we commence, I'd like to introduce the councillors and the senior staff who are with us this evening and to confirm councillors can see and hear each other. I'm going to call out the names of councillors um, as I see on the screen. So, um, Councillor Dimitriadis, welcome and good evening. Good evening, everyone. Councillor Suzanne Newton. Good evening, Mayor and everybody. Councillor Susan Rennie. Good evening, all. Councillor Tom Hannon. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Councillor Trent McCarthy. Good evening, Mayor, and good evening, everyone. Councillor Gaetano Greco. 
Uh, good evening, Mayor, and hello to everyone else. Good evening. Councillor Julie Williams. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. And our officers present tonight, we have Vanessa Petrie, who's the Acting General Manager of City Sustainability and Strategy, Catherine Pound, who's the Manager of City Development, Chad Griffiths, Manager of City Futures. Is Chad in the with us this evening? Mayor Chad will join us when his item comes up. Thank you. Stevie, is Stevie present? No. Is Joel present? No, oh, sorry. I've got different lists. Oh, yes, you are. Good evening, Joel. Sorry. Good evening. Sorry, I've just got a different list in front of me. Okay, I guess um, we can get on the way. Apologies. Note that Councillor um, Tim Lawrence is not available this evening. Um, item number three, disclosures of conflict of interest. Are there any conflicts to disclose? Councillor Newton. Yes. yes, thank you, Mayor. I've got a conflict for this mystery item and I'll declare that when we come to it. No, you have, a, you have a conflict of interest for item number 5.2, application for planning permit for 205 Smith Street, Thornbury noted. Thank you, Councillor. Are there any further um, conflict of interest to declare? Noted. Thank you, Councillors. Uh, item number four, confirmation of minutes previous meeting. So, Councillors, could I please have a motion for the adoption of minutes of the planning committee held on the 9th of May, 2022? Moved by Councillor Williams. Thank you. I can't. I can't see who's seconding that. Councillor Suzanne, Susan. Sorry, Susan Rennie. Thank you. All those in favour? Thank you. That's passed unanimously. Item number five: consideration of reports. Item five point one is the application for planning permit D dash three hundred two dash two hundred two one one Wardrop Grove Northcote. Councillors, item number 5.1 relates to the application for planning permit D302-2021, One Woodruff Road, North, Grove, sorry, Northcote. I ask the officers who will be um, addressing the item. Thank you, Mayor Messina. I will present this item uh, this evening. Yeah, this is a planning application um, at number one, Wardrop Grove, in Northcote, it's on the on the western side of the street. There, um, it has a lane running along its southern boundary, so that's a council uh, managed uh, right of way. That property is subject to some planning controls, notably the uh, general residential zone schedule number two. Uh, it's also subject to what's called a design and development overlay uh, schedule fourteen but it also forms part of the wider <clears throat> Northcote Activity Centre, which principally encompasses, you know, the main high street spine, but also the hinterland residential areas, including this particular property and the surrounding streets. This application um, comes, uh, is a second application in recent times for this property. The initial application um, came to council and was actually decided upon by um, the tribunal, the Victorian Civil and Administrative Tribunal. Now, in that decision, there was some issues raised around um, the provision of garden spaces for that earlier design, um, the materials utilised in that design, the form, um, the emphasis of the balconies, um, to the design of that earlier proposal, the front setback and some of the visual uh, impact of that development. The applicants come back um, following that decision and there's a long um, decision that's been set down by the tribunal that touches on all those issues. And this new development that we have before us this evening um, seeks to address those issues. Now, this new design is Similarly, for four dwellings, um, it's it's two it's three stories. Now, the uppermost level is within a roof form, as you'll notice on the plans. Each each dwelling has three bedrooms um, and a retreat and a study space, um, and each dwelling has access to two on-site car parking spaces, which they will be accessing via that adjacent right of way to the south. 
Each dwelling is, has a ground level living space. So they have their, their backyards immediately adjacent those spaces, uh, either facing north or northwest. Uh, and the maximum height of this development is um, just just over 10, 10 metres to the, to the peak of the roof pitch. Now, in response, I suppose, to those VCAT or that earlier decision, the revised design is different. The materials are different. So it's, it's more a brick construction, whereas the earlier design was more of a colour bond um, cladding uh, material that was heavily used in the earlier design that VCAT uh, did oppose. The balconies, which were very deliberate in the earlier design and a much more of a sort of an inset look within the roof form, and they continue to be on the southern side, they're not on the northern side, so facing that right of way. The setbacks increased to the street by one metre, so it's now eight metres, not seven. Uh, dwelling four, that's remodelled, so it doesn't have a north facing rear garden, it, it's more of a northwest facing rear garden. So as a result, dwelling for four in particular is quite different because it's set back um, substantially or more, far more than it was in that earlier design. There are some better landscaping opportunities along that rear uh, boundary as a result of that change to dwelling four. And it's clearer to me on the plans when comparing that there's better landscaping adjacent the right of way, which itself abuts other residential properties to the south. Um, so it is, um, and this latest design this evening, it did re receive um, four objections. Now, in finalising the assessment, the officers have looked at that uh, earlier VCAT design and done a very detailed assessment of this latest design versus that earlier decision by the tribunals, as you'll see in the report. As a result, um, an officers have recommended approval, uh, subject to conditions, as you'll see in the report. What I'd like to also mention, in addition to the conditions you'll see this evening in that report, uh, it's evident that the um, applicant would like to uh, reconstruct the right of way because it's Although it is constructed at the minute, the quality of the, um, the surfacing perhaps could be improved. So they're willing to reconstruct that right of way. So I'm looking to introduce a new condition into the uh, recommendation, which I can read out to you, which will address uh, that, that right of way construction. So it'll ensure that that does actually happen. So prior to the occupation of the development, the applicant would be required to submit plans detailing the construction and surfacing and drainage of the right of way abutting the southern boundary of the property, commencing from the western end of the property and continuing east to the footpath with Wardrop Grove. Um, those plans then must be submitted to council for our approval. And then the second part of that condition is the right of way um, must be surfaced in accordance with those plans and that the old works must be to the satisfaction of uh, the responsible authority. So if you want to say that on the screen, I can show you, but that's, that's the wording that would be included in that additional condition should the recommendation be to approve. So this sort of let you know because that's quite important. Thank you, Joel. Um, can I just ask, um, that becomes item number 20, is that correct? Do I go back? Let me just yeah. check that. Yeah, it's item number 20. Yeah, if, if, can, if can the I, last can condition... I, can I just confirm that what's on the screen is what you read out? It's, it appears to me that way. I just want a confirmation. Yeah, that's correct. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you, Joel. Um, do we have any questions? If I can go back to the gallery view, Rachna, and can I have councillors, are there any questions in regard regards to this application? 
Councillor Greco. Yes, hello. Yeah, look, yeah, uh, look, thank you for that um, uh, presentation about the uh, application. Just two questions. One question is um, um, just in relation to the previous application that went to VCAT and that was then rejected because of the grounds that you've said. Um, uh, this is directed through the Mayor to the officers. Can we just get a, a bit of an overview in relation to the remaining items? Uh, and aspects of the development. Um, does this application um, um, still ad uh, address, if you like, um, VCAT's concerns? Is there any uh, substantial variation from what was previously put to VCAT to what is now put to VCAT in relation to the matters um, that were not in, in, in dispute? That's the first question. And the second question is, I note that there were four objections to this particular application, just for the benefit of councillors and also uh, for the submitters and people watching. Um, um, generally, yeah, when we, it's only when we get five objections and councillors call in an application. Can you just explain uh, why in this particular case, uh, with four objections, why, is, why it has come before uh, the council planning committee for the benefit of the um, of who's listening into us. Yep, thank you. Thank you. Through you, Mayor Messina, I'll seek to answer the first question. Um, as I mentioned in that presentation, yeah, the, the sort of the backdrop, I suppose, is the VCAT case. So the applicant had the challenge of, um, you know, considering it and then also dealing with the regular issues of the planning controls and the planning scheme. So the critical things that were changed, as I mentioned, were the fact that they've changed the design. So it's quite a different looking building. So the roof forms, et cetera, many of the, um, you know, the, the amount of interplay between different, different elevations is quite different, it's much more simplified. So it's, elements of the built form are more sort of a vertical, there's less of the setbacks and the variation in the, um, in the interplay between the different elevations. Material wise, it's much more, it's, it's more of a brick building. Before, as I mentioned, it was much more of a, um, it was applied in sort of a, a color bond material. Um, Principally, most of the changes speak to the VCAT issues. Um, I'm just trying to think of other changes that, that sit outside that, which was principally your question, but there probably aren't too many because fundamentally it is the same design in the sense it's a series of dwellings running down the block. They're utilising the right of way as the key access point, both for vehicles and pedestrians. But I suppose some of the changes, like the change to dwelling four, wasn't explicitly called for by VCAT, but the applicant have chosen to do it in the way they have, perhaps in response to the context to the north, which is one, a driveway immediately adjacent that common boundary, but there's also an outbuilding. So dwelling four sits closer to that boundary. But I guess they've done that because they've had to pull off the rear boundary, which VCAT were concerned with around the, the visual bulk impact to that dwelling immediately to the west. Um, so yeah, when you look at that VCAT decision, they're not explicitly asking the applicant to do certain things, but they're certainly raising concerns. And in our assessment, the applicant's done a reasonable job of uh, dealing with those issues. Um, and if you go to the report, there's quite a bit of a, a summary, if you like, in the table, which mentions each individual issue and just how the applicant has addressed them. Through you, Madam Mayor, I'll jump in and take the second question of Councillor Greco, mm -hmm. if that's okay. So, Councillor Greco, thank you for your question. It was in relation to... Um, why this item has come before the council planning committee um, any um, any application may be called to the committee um, where there are two or more councillors make a written request to call an item in on the basis that there would be um, a broader interest of the community to be served by the, the committee considering the item so in this case um, 
uh, matters flagged were including in relation to car parking, the previous VCAT decision, um, the size of the development and overlooking. Thank you, Councillor Greco. Thank you. Councillor Greco, do you have a supplementary question? No. Okay. Councillor Rennie. Thank you, Mayor Messina. I just have a question in relation to waste. Uh, a note in the report that uh, the waste management plan wasn't deemed satisfactory and therefore a private waste collection is proposed. That's a little unusual for a townhouse type development. Um, is there precedent for that? And um, are there alternatives? Because I don't view it as particularly satisfactory that we move into a scenario where um, private waste collection is occurring for townhouses, mainly because we get poor um, environmental outcomes. Through you, Mayor Messina, um, it is unusual. Normally, there's, you know, we do rely on the council's waste services for developments of this scale. Um, but sometimes, you know, when we're managing waste, it is beneficial to utilise a private service, particularly where access is a concern or we've got other issues around, you know, the volume of waste that needs to be collected and the volume of kind of space needed to store the waste uh, bins and so on. So through and discussions with the applicant, I understand that was the arrangement that was entered into was to allow this particular development to rely on, on private waste. Um, but I take your point, it isn't, isn't the normal course of events or the approach for, for this scale of residential development. Thank you. Are there any further questions? Thank you. Um, there be no further questions. Uh, we'll now move to the hearing of submissions. Councillors, we have four submitters this evening, three objectors and one applicant um, who wish to address the planning committee tonight. Um, can I please um, ask Genevieve McMahon, who's an objector, to please unmute herself and come onto camera. Welcome and good evening, Genevieve. Welcome. Um, good evening, Mayor and councillors and others. Okay, I'm presenting on behalf of my husband, Anthony Kelly, and myself um, about the proposed development at One Wardrop Grove at the rear of our property at 29 Mitchell Street. I recognise and appreciate the fact that many of our original concerns have been addressed with the redesign, but I continue to be concerned that development is an overdevelopment of the site rather than a modest degree of infill. I am particularly concerned about the lack of dedicated pedestrian walkway to access the redwellings. To my mind, pedestrians needing to share a space with the cars fails to meet the stated council objective of the need to create human scale spaces that promote casual interaction and neighbourliness. I also believe that it contradicts the assertion in clause 55.03 slash seven that the development has not resulted in the creation of unsafe spaces because I think the right of way has a potential to be very unsafe. That particularly concerns me from a professional point of view as well as a personal point of view because I work with people with acquired brain injuries from, brain inju from um, car accidents. So I think it has a potential to be unsafe. The particular right of way is narrow and very steep. It's got about a one in 10 incline and currently has rough uneven surface of patched concrete which is very different to the glossy pictures in the architectural diagrams, which I understand tonight is as the um, developers undertaken to address. I have experienced it's very challenging to walk down, particularly at night or in wet weather, as it's dark and slippery underfoot. It's currently only used by our one car to access our garage, but the proposed development would mean it's accessed by nine cars, plus the residents of the three rear dwellings, which is a huge increase in usage. And those rear dwellings have no other alternative access to their buildings. While access for able-bodied pedestrians is difficult in the current conditions, it would be really challenging for pedestrians with prams, for small children, people with shopping or people with mobility restrictions. It's also, and I think this is raised by um, Councillor Rennie's question, it's problematic for people taking bins to and from wardrobe growth to collection because it is very steep. In the VCAT ruling, safety concerns in relation to wardrobe growth were disregarded due to the assessment of the relatively small number of vehicles in the street. While that's true some of the time, um, particularly during the COVID lockdowns when the assessment was made, Wardrop Grove is often very busy due to Santa Maria traffic and will only become busier when the new developments um, completed. There's also a blind spot coming out of the right of way into Wardrop Grove due to the brick garage at the southern entrance of the right of way, which, which can sort of result in close encounters on many occasions. Um, and I note development that 
tonight that there's been that assurance for the developer to develop the right of way. Um, I wanted to make the, get some sort of reassurance that the council would take responsibility to provide adequate lighting, paving and safety features to allow safe passage of cars and pedestrians in the right of way and Wardrop Grove. If not, yeah, I wanted to make sure that the developer was required to take responsibility. Um, to be an asset to the area, the right of way needs to constitute a pedestrian friendly street as per the neighbourhood character guidelines, rather than somewhere that future residents fear to use due to risk of slipping, fear of being hit by a car or coming down or sand rare students being hit by a car on the way to school. Thank you. Thank you, Genevieve. Thank you. I now um, invite Pam Morton, who's an objector, to please turn her microphone on and her camera on. And good evening again, Pam. Um, and I'll invite the um, timekeeper to perhaps start the clock at three minutes, Pam. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you to the Planning Committee for the opportunity to address you this evening. Um, I take the opportunity just to remind councillors that we've been at this place before, and it was with great reluctance that we went to VCAT um, and had the previous decision overturned. I should have mentioned too that I'm representing my father, William Jackson. He is the owner of both Three Wardrop Grove and 27 Mitchell Street, Northcote, and both properties are severely impacted by this proposed development. I would submit that the new proposal is simply a pared down version of the, the original design that again fails to meet the requirements of the planning scheme and site specific requirements. Um, the application, again, is based on a yield outcome, and the focus has been on manoeuvring the application to comply with various design metrics, but it still, still fails to meet the essential requirements. And in particular, I'm referring to the low change residential zoning and design development overlay 14, which has a specific requirement for the maintenance of rear yards. And this was a key issue that was focused on in the VCAT decision, uh, in the 2020 decision. The previous home on the site has now been demolished, but it originally had approximately 30% of the property as the rear garden. It also had a separate front yard and side garden areas. And the open space was consistent with all of the large open areas in the adjoining properties in both Wardrop Grove and Mitchell Street. We now have a proposal that, that celebrates a site total of 36%, which when the consideration is based on a front yard area and small courtyards, means that it is only pro probably 9% of each uh, unit in terms of the open space garden. Now this is quite a deviation from a, a planning requirement that stipulates the maintenance of rear yards. The new proposal also remains a large continuous built form that runs effectively the length of the subject land. And that sentence is a quote from the VCAT decision. Now this detracts from the heritage building at Three Wardrop Grove and 27 Mitchell Street is still overshadowed by an overly dominant building that um, detracts from the amenity of that property. I would strongly urge you to reject this uh, proposal and to carefully reconsider the VCAT case because the planning report does not adequately address all of the individual requirements. Um, I thank you for the opportunity to make this submission to you. Thank you, Pam. I now invite um, Mark Stayan. Stayan, sorry. Hi, and Good thank evening. you for the opportunity. Good evening, you have three minutes, Mark. Thank you very much. First, um, I'm speaking on behalf of uh, both eight and 10 Wardrop Grove, uh, following some consultation with them today. Um, the key concerns from the, uh, I am, I'm at 10 Wardrop Grove. The key concerns from uh, the people at eight Wardrop Grove is that there was no proper advertising of the, the planning uh, uh, proposal. Um, according to the site, um, it was listed on the uh, fence, but we never received any communication in the mail. So we wanted to make sure that um, our um, voices were heard in the consultation process. 
And to put that in context, we first heard of the planning um, proposal on Sunday of this last week. Um, so we obviously uh, were quite late in um, putting forward our objections. Um, the primary items that we object to um, are that the, the height of three storeys um, uh, to 10 metres uh, running up the hill would actually end up being much higher than that and um, cut off light to the properties on the on other side of the road. And also we believe does not comply with the planning zone requirements from the front of the property to the back even though uh, a height of 10 metres was mentioned before, we understand that it should be measured from the front of the property to the back. So we would like that for that to be confirmed. The second item um, that we were concerned of is parking. Um, I think there's already been some discussion that parking is available, but we believe that it will uh, continue to um, congest the street, which is incredibly congested at the moment and particularly for waste services removal is very difficult for the trucks to get down. They have to back down the street. And in supporting of that also, the most recent development that was approved next to Santa Maria's High School was required to put in underground car parking, um, which they have subsequently done and that excavation is complete. I'd also like to note at that point that within um, 400 metres uh, away from High Street from where this uh, proposal is, there are no three-storey uh, uh, either high density or residential dwellings. So according to the VCAT statement, that would imply to me that it was out of character with the neighbourhood, which was also a key point that was raised during the VCAT um, proceedings. Um, the final um, item uh, raised by uh, Pam and David at um, Eight Ward Drop Grove was that the design is not in keeping with the environment and it is um, not that they're they're against modern buildings but with three stories and three levels they should be required to to excavate. Thank you Mark thank you for your attendance this evening. Um, I now would like to invite Susika on the good evening um, I will ask you to yep yeah, you have three minutes. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Um, I'm Sue Suka, the town planner at CK Roos Architects. Our client, a family from Darabin for over 50 years, have worked with us and council every step of the process over the last four years. The goal is to provide smaller conscious housing, making Northcote more affordable. Following the VCAT refusal, we worked with council to respond to each ground of contention. This was done both outside of formal lodgement and throughout the course of this application. The current proposal of four three-storey dwellings received a total of five objections, excluding the last person that I heard because I wasn't notified, apologies. Um, we provided an opportunity to meet and discuss the application with each objector. There was one who agreed and has since unconditionally withdrawn their objection. The density proposed balances the previous VCAT refusal grounds with the zone and the overlay. The height is lower, the form is domestic in scale and materiality. The front and rear setbacks allow for meaningful planting and harmony with the north adjoining heritage dwelling. The application also proposes to use the laneway south of the site for vehicle access. It improves upon the previous application from an ESD perspective uh, by reaching a 6.5 star rating and commits to being gas free, incorporates a 2000 litre rainwater tank for each dwelling, uses double glazed windows for all habitable room windows, incorporates solar panels for each dwelling, commits to installing energy efficient services internally. The owners and family are also willing to upgrade the laneway to ensure waste services access in and out of the laneway is safe, efficient and considered an improvement to its current condition. I'll also take you to the ground floor plans, just hearing what everyone's saying, where we've actually widened the inwards to the weather garages. So it actually increases um, your ability to turn safely in and out. The site sits in an eclectic part of Northcote. North beyond the heritage lot, we have Santa Maria College and 14 to 16 Wardrop where a two and three storey residential development has been approved for seven dwellings. Beyond the laneway south of the site, we also see 22 Mitchell Street where three storey attached dwellings has also recently been built. We ask councillors to consider the site in context of where it sits, the call for density via the zone and design, design, 
sorry, the zone design and development overlay and changes in massing and form to approve the development subject to your conditions. I thank you for your time. You see. Councillors, do I have a motion? Councillor Demetriadis. Your motion, please. Um, I'd like to move the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Um, can I go back to gallery view so I can see all councillors? Do I have a second for this? Is there a seconder? Can I see hands? No. Um, that is Lats. Oh, Councillor Councillor Greco. Sorry. Councillor Dimitriadis, would you like to speak to it? Sorry, I'm just in a funny uh, spot at the moment, but I wanted to um, reiterate that this has actually been approved by our plan. Well, our planning team have reviewed this particular application quite carefully. They reviewed it twice. The first time they actually um, gave the uh, authorised the permit and. Uh, it was taken to VCAT by residents. Um, this time that all those um, VCAT, uh, this time they put in a new application. The application is actually uh, coincides with what VCAT asked and our officers are again recommending that we support this application. Um, so I'm in support of it. Um, I believe we've got less objectors. So there's uh, four now, which technically sh probably shouldn't come to council. Um, so I'm supportive of this application based on our officer's recommendation and the VCAT decision that it's been um, abided by. Thank you, Councillor Dimitriadis. Councillor Greco. Uh, may I reserve my right to speak? Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any further speakers? Councillor Rennie. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I'd like to move an amendment, which would be point 20, which relates to um, the laneway improvement. I believe that officers have that available um, as it was prepared uh, by staff. So I, I seek the agreement of the mover and seconder to incorporate um, that if they're happy to do so. What are the, can I just have, um, can we highlight the amendments based on the revised officer's recommendation that Councillor Rennie is highlighting, saying, stating that there is a further amendment. Can we have that from the, from the officers, please, so that we have some clear guidance of what the changes are? So the point 20 is uh, the amendment, so it's highlighted. So originally, officer recommendation had 19 points, and point number 20 is addition to officer's recommendation, and that I think Councillor Rennie's intention is to add this one. Okay, all right, sorry, yeah. beg your pardon, Councillor Rennie. I understood that what we were moving was the original officer's recommendation with the item number 20, which was what the officers had, public, had previously put up. So I apologise. So um, I'm assuming that's what Councillor Dimitriadis was moving. Councillor Dimitriadis, is that what you were initially moving? Can I just have some confirmation around that? Uh, yes, um, Mayor, because that's what the officer said, that they were, that if we do, if it was approved, it would actually include that item. Thank, thank you. Is that acceptable to the mover, to the seconder and the mover? Obviously, yes, Councillor Dimitriadis. Councillor yes, Dimitriadis. I was the, uh, uh, yes, Mayor, I was of the same understanding. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Rennie, thank you. Councillor Rennie, would you like to speak to the, to the motion? Um, look, I will thank you, Mayor, and I confess I'm of two minds in relation to this application. I can see that considerable uh, thought has been given to making it more compliant with the VCAT uh, ruling. I am uh, significantly concerned that there seems to be no way to better manage waste and that waste will be um, via a private waste collection uh, service, and I find that highly unsatisfactory in the context of uh, a quiet residential street such as this. It places another truck in the street. It leads to poor outcomes. And if it's not possible to um, manage waste from a development of this size in such a way that in a quiet street we need private waste collectors, then that suggests to me that there's a problem at some point in the process. And I'm not sure whether that's with density and trying to actually fit too much in, with bin size, with, you know, I, I don't actually know what the solution to that is, but I, I think it's a, a, an undesirable precedent to have private waste collection for townhouse developments. 
I'm not sure whether there's a way um, to change that. But for me, um, you know, that makes me distinctly uncomfortable with the development that I think otherwise has quite a lot of merit in particular. I think that there are lots of families who would love to move into these type of family homes in this area. Um, I'm also really mindful that last time, you know, we left it to residents to take something to VCAT and VCAT um, came ruled in, in favour of the points they made around neighbourhood character. And I think that, you know, I, I, I take my hat off to those residents who weren't satisfied with the council recommendation and who challenged that through um, the processes available to them. Um, and, you know, I think for that okay. reason, we, we owe it to residents to, to listen to their concerns here. But essentially, I don't think the density is the issue. Um, it's the problems that it creates. Thank you, Councillor Rennie. Do we have any further speakers? Oh, I noticed that Joel's got his hand up. So, Joel, did you want to address something? And then we'll go to Councillor Hannon. I'm assuming you want to address the waste issue. Yes, thank you, Ma'am Messina. I just wanted to step in there and just make the point. I've had another look at the conditions. Now, there is a condition number nine within the recommendation which talks to the um, management of waste. We've also got advice uh, more recently from our waste team and they've indicated that the development could accommodate eight council waste bins within the site comfortably to allow a council waste service to um, provide the waste services for the site. Um, but there is a detailed condition number nine, which does go into all of the details around waste um, which will be ratified in a, in a waste management plan. Um, admittedly, there is a small chance that it still could be private. There is a sort of a, a, a section in that condition which talks to the possibility of private, but, ba but basically based on more recent advice, it would appear that it could be serviced by Council's Waste Services uh, Unit. Uh, thank you, Mr Boyle. That's very helpful for me. Thank you. Councillor Hannon. Thanks, Mayor. Um, I'm um, sorry to say I'm not supportive of, of this amendment, um, of this motion. Um, I do appreciate the, the goodwill um, that's been shown by the applicant uh, to address the concerns raised by um, residents in the previous VCAT case, um, as well as um, ensuring that the laneway is maintained in good condition. Um, I also appreciate that the thorough proposed conditions which um, the, the Darabin Council team have been working on to ensure high standards in relation to environment, safety, amenity, et cetera. Um, look, fundamentally, I've, I'm just concerned there are too many units from this particular space. Um, uh, you know, four units of three storeys on this particular space seems to me to be pushing the limits. Uh, the laneway, as, as has been described, is narrow and it's a dead end. It's not designed to take four units, each with potentially two cars as well as bikes, scooters and pedestrians, et cetera. Uh, there's a lack of garden space for each unit. Um, I appreciate there's a large setback in the front yard, although it's not quite, um, I don't believe it's quite within um, council standards. And uh, look, I appreciate the intention is to provide housing for the family and future generations, um, but it's quite possible the title will be subdivided in the future. And so then you're left with one property, one unit with a garden and three with very little garden space. Um, I'm mindful of the precedent this will set um, for, for this area and other areas in Darabin. Yes, it's true there are properties which have um, four units for same or similar number of units, or there are properties that have units with, with three storeys. But on this particular site with a dead end narrow laneway, um, I just don't, I don't think it's going to create um, the sort of amenity that we would want for to see across Darabin. Thank you, Councillor Hannon. Are there any yeah. further speakers? Councillor Rennie, I'm, I recognise that your hand is up. Thank you. Are there any further speakers? Councillor Greco. Thanks, Mayor Messina. Um, yeah, look, um, I'm inclined to um, support this um, application. Um, as has been mentioned, I, I think that the applicant has um, duly um, dealt with the um, uh, VCAT um, requirements um, in relation to the previous application and come back to us 
with an application that addresses um, the issues that were um, that were problematic. You know, the garden spaces, the materials that were used, the issues with the um, uh, the balconies, and and also in relation to to the lane. Um, I understand. Yes, it's a three story bu uh, uh, a building, uh, but three story buildings are, are permitted within um, certain heights, but. Um, you could say that this is technically a three-storey building, but what's interesting of this particular application is that the third storey is uh, well embedded in the roof of the uh, building, which is a um, uh, 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 an innovative an innovative way to um, um, create more more living space whilst it's embedded in the roof. The other interesting thing of this application, I think that the applicant has gone some way in relation to meeting not only meeting, but I would say surpassing our ESD standards, um, as was mentioned by the, the, the applicant's representative in regards to uh, double glazing and, and all, all the other um, um, uh, gas-free and all the other uh, ESD standards that um, we are advocating for. Um, and obviously, and some of them are beyond what is in, in our planning application. So that, that's a very positive thing. Overall, I think it's a, a positive um, um, a new response um, in relation to that side, and um, and I believe that um, that the applicant has um, gone a long way in developing a proposal which uh, which could be um, supportable. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Greco. Are there any further speakers? As there are no further speakers, I will put that all to the vote. All those in favour? That's Councillor Messina, Councillor McCarthy, Councillor Greco, Councillor William, Councillor Newton, Councillor Dimitriadis, Councillor Rini. All those against? <coughs> Councillor Hannon. Um, thank you, councillors. The planning, the, the planning committee has decided to support the application and issue a notice of decision to grant a planning permit subject to conditions. This decision is not final. An objector can appeal the decision and the applicant can appeal any conditions at BCAT. The process of the appeal is subject to timeframes detailed on the documentation to be sent to the objector and the applicant. Thank you. Councillors, the next item on the agenda is item number 5.2, application for planning permit D7422020205 Smith Street, Thornbury. And Councillor Newton. Thank you, Mayor. I've got a conflict on this item. So I live quite close to the subject area. So I'd like to declare a conflict and step out of the meeting. And if someone could just let me know when this item is finished, that would be great. Thank, Thank you, Councillor Newton. I'll wait for the um I'll wait for Georgie to advise us when you uh, have left the meeting and we can start the meeting once again. Thank you, Mayor Messina. I'll take things. Uh, just one moment, Mr. Ball, just one moment. I just want confirmation that Councillor Newton has left the building. Has Councillor left. Newton has left the meeting. <laughs> Thank you. Um, over to you. Thank you, Mr. Boyle. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Messina. Yes, uh, this property is at 205 Smith Street in Thornbury. It's a corner lot. It's um, on the corner of Comus Grove uh, and Smith Street. It's a residential area. Uh, the site uh, and surrounds are within the general residential zone schedule two of the Darabin planning scheme. What we have as before us is an application um, to remove the existing dwelling from the site and construct three uh, brand new dwellings. The dwellings are laid out in a, an attached form. They're all double story. Um, all three dwellings have their sort of their pedestrian frontage uh, to Smith Street. Dwellings one and two also provide vehicular access direct to uh, Smith Street. Dwellings uh, one and two provide three bedroom accommodation and dwellings three will have uh, two bedrooms and access um, for vehicles off Comus Grove. Um, and dwellings one and two have two uh, car parking spaces each, um, which accords with the planning scheme and dwelling three, just the one space. Um, private open space and living spaces internal to the dwellings are all at ground level. So it's a fairly conventional layout. Um, 
Notice of the application was undertaken with signs on the site and letters to adjoining and adjacent properties and uh, six objections were received. Now in the end, this was an application that changed quite a bit during the course of um, the application process. Um, different designs were put forth, different layouts, different car parking arrangements. Uh, there was even a proposal with zero parking uh, and that was what received most of the objections. Following that initial uh, advertising process, what's called a section 59A amendment was put through to council, which um, dealt with some of the officer and the resident issues on that car parking um, side of things particularly. So now we do have car parking. As I mentioned, two spaces each for uh, dwellings one and two and one space for dwelling three. Um, so that's a good outcome um, in terms of responding to those issues. On top of that, officers have undertaken, you know, a holistic assessment of the proposal against the planning scheme. Um, it's been determined there is a good level of compliance with um, the planning scheme. You'll note in the report, dwelling three slightly uh, reduced front setback, but it's the most furthest dwelling from the adjacent neighbours being the very corner dwelling. Um, and then there's an also a slight area of non-compliance with solar access to the private open space of dwelling three also. But on the whole, um, a pretty good development for a site that's a little bigger than most in the street, particularly on that side of Smith Street. So it can accommodate three relatively you know, terrace-like dwellings. Um, so it's recommended for approval. There aren't a huge amount of conditions, which speaks to the level of compliance. Um, and that's all I've got to say on that one. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Boyle. Um, councillors, are there any questions to the officers? Councillor McCarthy. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, just there's a reference in the report to the option to include a condition to protect the um, sunlight to the the solar panels on the property to the rear, uh, to the south. Um, just wanting to understand um, from Mr. Boyle's presentation there, I, I couldn't see a condition of that nature. Is that, is that a condition that councillors would need to add um, to the existing set of conditions? Let me just open the plans through you, Mamasina. Just want to verify the location of those panels. Through you, Madam Mayor, I might just jump in on that question. So the condition refers to um, protecting the solar panels uh, through a condition requiring no canopy planting, sorry, no canopy planting over the height of 3.5 metres adjacent to the southern boundary. So I'll just cross-reference that to the landscaping plan condition to, to confirm that whether that condition has been included in that landscaping plan condition. It is, it, it, is it is included at recommendation, recommended condition 3A that deals with the solar panels and not having a greater height at 3.5 metres. So I believe that answers your question, Councillor McCarthy. Thank you. Thank, thanks very much. Thank you. Are there any further questions, councillors? As there are none, um, we will hear now to submitters. Councillors, we have one submitter on behalf of the applicant this evening. Um, we have either Anthony or Vito that's going to address the planning committee meeting. Anthony, I'm assuming you're going to address the planning committee meeting? Yes, that's correct. Hi, how, how are you guys? <clears throat> good evening. Um, you have three minutes. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, cool. uh, good evening, councillors, and thanks for the opportunity um, to speak in favour of this development tonight. Um, yeah, as Joel mentioned, first up, we, we, um, it's fair to say we worked fairly closely with council officers to achieve a good development outcome for this corner property. 
The development achieves a high compliance with Clause 55, uh, high compliance with Council's Good Design Code, and has re responded favor favorably to key objective concerns initially raised. Um, I think Joel mentioned that we, there were a couple of, we had a couple of goes at uh, the design of this application. And I think um, this application was lodged in December, 2020. Um, it was approximately two months after the Good Design Code was adopted by council. Um, and the original proposal was a, was a more period design uh, with each dwelling having car parking. Um, and in response to Council's RFI letter and the new Good Design Code at that time, um, and obviously the willingness to work with council officers, we had amended the application to have a modern design. And I don't know why we removed the car parking, which was which essentially is why we shot ourselves in the foot and probably why we're here today, because um, all the objective concerns pretty much were about the, the non-car parking for the three dwellings. Um, and then in doing so, that that um, that application or that that um, those plans were advertised, and we received six, six objections. So for us, it was a no-brainer to um, amend the application to include car parking for each of the dwellings. Um, and we also amended some of the, the plans to ensure that no overshadowing was caused to the neighbours to the to the east and south. Um, as a result, the application was re-advertised and no additional um, objections were, were received. And I think no one's here tonight as well speaking against the application. Um, the application was referred internally to Council's um, Infrastructure Department, ESD Officer, Urban Designer, Transport Management and Tree Management Unit, who have no uh, objection with the proposal. I think what, what should have been mentioned or what hasn't been mentioned is, which is a major factor in what we have designed is the site is actually made up of three property titles. Um, and it is a larger property than what's surrounding. So essentially what we've done is we've proposed one dwelling per lot. Um, and if you've got access to the plans or if we can bring the plans up, we can see in the site context plan that um, hatched in red are the actual property titles. Yes. So, um, and if we compare the size of each lot to the single front end dwellings in that context, we're actually, what we're proposing is not unreasonable um, as, you know, a, a, a dwellings and as of right per property title. Thank um, you, Anthony. That's where we've come up. It's time. Thank you, Anthony. I'm so sorry. That's time. That's your three minutes. Thank you very much. Can I at least, can I at least ask if you can support the application? <laughs> you can say that. Thank um, you, Anthony. Um, councillors, do we have a motion? Councillor McCarthy. I'm ha happy to move the officer's recommendation, Mayor. Thank you. Um, I saw your hand, and I saw your hand up, Councillor Rennie. Um, I'm assuming you. I, I can't see. I've go back to the gallery view. I'm sorry, councillors. Councillor Rennie, um, you're you're going to be seconding. Second it. Yes. Great. Thank you, Councillor McCarthy. Would you like to speak to it? Um, thanks, Mayor. Look, happy to speak in favour of this. Um, this is in, in my ward and um, I'm very familiar with the, the location and, uh, and some of the issues that the um, applicant has had to address. Um, and it is interesting to note the source of the objections being largely about the car parking provision and understandably so because of the nature of the, the corner and the location there. Um, there's obviously some um, effort that's gone been gone to by our officers and I want to thank them for their work in seeking to get the best outcome here um, because this is an unusual site it has um, a, some limitations and I think on given that it is provided for this sort of development in this location um, we need to be cognizant of that fact um, that the, uh, the the current planning arrangements do provide for this um, but that's not without its challenges and it, it is fair to say that um, the solar access is something that I've looked at closely um, not just the solar, to the um, adjoining property, uh, their solar panels, but also the solar on site to the property. Um, so the actual um, solar into the properties themselves. Um, and one of the things that's really important here is that when we approve uh, developments of this configuration, that we ensure that the internal amenity um, to the properties is of the high standard that we would expect. And if not, we condition it um, to, uh, to try to achieve that outcome. So that's what we have here. Um, so, Mayor, on that basis, I'm happy to support this. I note that there were six objections. Um, they haven't been withdrawn, but they were largely around the car parking 
issues which have been addressed as I can understand it from the officer's report today. And uh, on that basis, I'm willing to support it. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor McCarthy. Councillor Rennie. I'm happy to reserve. I think Councillor McCarthy's covered a lot. Thank you. Are there any further speakers? I'll now put this item to the vote. All those in favour? That's Councillor Rennie, Councillor Han Oh, that's been passed unanimously, noting that Councillor Dimitriadis has left um, the meeting. Thank you. Um, the planning committee has decided to support the application and issue a notice of decision to grant a planning permit subject to conditions. This decision is not final. An objector can appeal the decision and the applicant can appeal any conditions of BCAT. The process of the appeal is subject to timeframes detailed on the documentation to be sent to the objector and the applicant. Thank you very much for your attendance. Oh. Oh, Mayor, I, I wanted to get in early before the next item. I'll let you finish this item. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. I put you saw your hand up. Apologies. <laughs> so, um, good evening. Sorry. Um, I'll just finish that off. Um, the process of appeal is subject to timeframes, detail on the doc documentation to be sent to the objector and the applicant. I'd like to thank all submitters and all objectors this evening attending on this cold, cold blasty evening. And um, thank you for once again for your attendance to the planning committee. I'd like to thank officers for their detailed thorough report, not only in the reports themselves, but also in the presentation. Councillor Hannon, did you want to move the next item? Is that why you put no, your hand up? No, I apologise, Mayor. Look, I... Um... When you asked earlier for any conflicts, I didn't didn't um, see any obvious conflicts. But having looked um, in more detail at the wording of of the recommendation, I, I think there may be a perceived conflict in in relation a general perceived conflict in relation to my work in the Department of Environment, uh, Land, Water, and Planning. So it's probably best that I sit out for the next item. Great. And I, can I can I now ask? Um, Rachna to also thank you noted Councillor Hannon can I ask Rachna to um, invite Councillor Newton back into the meeting she's back thank you um, and could you please kindly advise me when um, Councillor Hannon leaves Councillor Hannon has left Thank you. Thanks, Georgie. Um, councillors, item number 5.3 is a CASB elevating ESD stage two planning scheme amendments. Um, we will now ask the officers to prevent, present a briefing to the committee. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to introduce my colleague, Alia Slamet, um, who is acting coordinator of strategic planning. He will introduce this item and answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, councillors. So Darabin has been working with the Council Alliance for Sustainable Built Environment, known as CASB, in partnership with 30 councils across Victoria to improve environmentally sustainable development policy in the, excuse me, in the planning scheme. This is called the Elevating ESG Targets Planning Project. Stage one of the project involving establishing the technical base and drafting the new policy has been completed. We're now at stage two, which involves the planning scheme amendment process to implement the new policy. Advocacy to the state government is required because of the pioneering nature of the policy, which we expect will aim higher than the state government's forthcoming ESD policy reforms. Consultation with community will take place as part of the statutory planning scheme amendment process, which will allow all submissions from community to be properly documented and considered. It's recommended the council join the collective action of CASB and the group of councils by signing the MOU, the Memorandum of Understanding, to partake in stage two, progressing with a planning scheme amendment to prepare and publicly exhibit the proposed updated ESD planning policy, participating in joint advocacy to Victorian government ministers and participating in informal community awareness raising communications activities centrally led by CASB on behalf of the partner councils. In doing so, Council will be supporting its commitment to taking firm action on climate change and improving the design of development on private land. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are there any questions to the officers, councillors? Councillor McCarthy. Mayor, Mayor, it's just if, if we have an indication of the 31 councils, how many um, so far have um, signed on to the process, if we have an update on that one. Thank you, Councillor McCarthy, through the Mayor. 
Currently, approximately half, I understand, have signed on. Um, most councils are still um, progressing with taking these items to the chamber. So um, I think this week uh, there are a number of councils and even next week. So hopefully by the end of June we'll have a firm understanding of how many councils have signed on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any further questions? Councillors, do I have a motion? Councillor McCarthy. Happy to move the officer's recommendation, Mayor. Uh, second, Councillor Rennie. I saw your hand. Um, Councillor McCarthy, would you like to speak to it? Um, thank you. It would be give me great pleasure to, to speak to this motion. And I want to start off by thanking the work and initiative of our officers in being involved in, the, in this really important work with CASB to give some context. And I've had the benefit of um, hearing about this project from uh, its very first inception, which was um, some... In fact, I think it might even be a couple of years ago now. Um, certainly the work of CASB is deeply connected with the work um, through the Greenhouse Alliances, and I'm on the, I'm the chair of the Northern Alliance for Greenhouse Action. So we've been wa watching this project develop and evolve um, very closely because this is part of the missing piece that, that sits within the planning scheme about how we can lift the standards towards those zero carbon aspirations that we have for our planning environment. Um, to give councillors some context, um, this is a, it's a bit like the it's a bit like Vico in the, in some respects in the sense that it requires collaboration of a whole range of councils to work together towards a common aspiration. The difference here is that this is not about our operations. This is actually about our ability to influence um, and in fact control and mandate certain things when it comes to the built environment and the planning environment on private land. As councillors may recall, we have previously gone through a collective process around. Um, ESD standards and what this piece of work does is brings that to the whole next level. Um, you might, councillors may recall there's been discussion about a zero carbon planning scheme amendment. Um, there's been other terms that have been used as well. This is the, the detailed piece of work um, that gets us to that next stage and really to be frank councillors that you know the clock is, is the critical thing here. We want to get uh, a ministerial sign off on, on this. We want to obviously sign on as part of the MOU and we want to progress this work as quickly as possible because the sooner we get the planning scheme amendment in place in the way that our officers have worked on it, um, the sooner we can enforce the sorts of sustainable outcomes that we know are good for not only for our planet and our built environment, um, but also for the livability of, uh, of properties going forward. So I really endorse the work that's gone into this. Um, thank our officers um, and all the officers, in fact, across um, the 31 councils that are involved in this collective action um, and really hope that that at the state level that the minister gives us um, the go ahead, um, because it has been a difficult process. It is a process that is council led, um, but it is a process where councils are doing the detailed work to try to um, lift that aspiration in response to the climate emergency. And, uh, and it can only deliver great outcomes um, for both our community and also our action on climate change as well. So once again, thank you and uh, happy to endorse it. Thank you, Councillor McCarthy. Councillor Rennie. Thank you, Mayor. A very significant thank you to all the staff and others in different councils involved in this work. If there's ever been a time when I think we appreciate what it would be like to live in a home that didn't need gas and lots of electricity, uh, now is that time with gas shortages and electricity prices going up. That future is possible, and this is a step towards that future. Um, so I commend it to everyone. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Rennie. Are there any further speakers? I look forward. Thank you. for. I just want to echo what my counts, fellow councillors have said in relation to the collective thank yous of this much-anticipated work. And I also look forward to a future without gas and electricity, especially with the economic climate that we're escalating in. Councillors, um, I now put that motion to the vote. Um, all those in favour? Just know that that's carried unanimously. Thank you. Um, Rachna, can I please ask you to re-invite Councillor Hannon back into the meeting? Yes. Mayor Messina, we're just waiting for him to join. Thank you. We'll be moving on to item number six, other business.
Mayor, given the nature of the further business to yeah, transfer, yeah. I wonder if we could keep going because I think yeah. Councillor Hannon would be very comfortable with that. I was going to say, okay, item number six, other business, item 6.1, general plan planning information, scheduled VCAT applications. Is there a move of the recommendation? Councillor Williams is the mover. Councillor Greco is the seconder. Councillor Williams, would you like to speak to the item? No. Um, Councillor Greco, would you like to speak to the item? No. All those in favour? Sorry, I should have said, are there any other speakers? I'm assuming no. All those in favour? That's been carried unanimously. I note that Councillor Hannon has just entered the, entered the meeting. Councillor, did you vote on that last item just for the purposes of documentation? Uh, yeah. Um, sorry, I was listening and I'm happy to support it. Thank you. Noted. Thank you. Um, item number seven, offer a consideration reports considered confidential. There are none. Item number eight, close of meeting, meeting not beating, meeting. Um, councillors, as there's no other business to consider this evening, I'd like to declare that the meeting finished, planning committee meeting ceases and is closed at 7.50pm. Thank you for your attendance and I uh, look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you.